Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today is going to be a solo episode and I am going to be chatting about clutter. I am a mess. I'm a mess. (laughs) My shop is so full of clutter, so full of junk, and I've always been kind of a, a messy person. I've always had my stuff like in piles, right? Like organized chaos. I know where things are and no one else does. And for so many reasons, that has to change. And the areas of my business that are clutter free are working so well for me that it's almost making the areas that are full of clutter stand out like a sore thumb. And I don't know how to explain it other than I can feel the impact of the clutter, like physically and mentally. I had a job last week that was a bit stressful because it was something that I don't do a ton. Um, It was like an all foil install. So I needed to be able to spread things out on the floor to tape them. It was a pretty large job back to back with another large job. So I was limited on space in the first place. And then if you add clutter and disorganization and searching for things and tripping over things. When you add all that to the equation, it's enough to make you want to quit. Honestly, like it was such an unpleasant experience. I was like, never again. Like I have to, I have to stop. So I actually listened to an audiobook about decluttering. Um, it's not the, it's not the Con Marie, whatever that one is. I've done that too. I'm not into it. Um, I don't believe that my things have little personalities or, or whatever. So I am not into that. I'm a bit more ruthless. I love throwing things away. I love giving things to goodwill, but it always seems to creep back. So I feel like decluttering has to be like a quarterly thing for me. And if that's you, if you are living in the clutter, I'm hoping this episode can be motivating because I think starting is definitely the hardest part. Bringing yourself to start cleaning out and and making those piles and throwing things away, that is definitely the hardest part for me. Once I get going, I'm like a ruthless machine. I love a good purge, but it's hard, especially I live in Wisconsin, so it's so cold most of the year that that, I think, is when the stuff starts to to gather. So let's take a quick break. Let's hear from a sponsor. Then I'm going to start this episode with why why I need to fight the clutter, why you need to get a system in place to fight the clutter, um, areas where we have this clutter in our life. And then in part two, we're going to be talking about um, the power of getting rid of things and not just physical, but mental and digital. So I'm going to go through a lot of different areas of decluttering. So um, we'll take a quick break and then we will get back into our spring cleaning episode. Okay, guys, you know exactly who I'm going to talk about and what I'm going to say because our sponsors are so consistent and awesome. Of course, I'm talking about Having a Party Wholesale. They have been a sponsor for such a long time now. I love hearing that you guys are ordering from them, that you are checking out their website, and that you are seeing what great people they are running that business. But in case you don't know, Having a Party Wholesale is a balloon distributor and they sell everything from balloons to inflators to all of the gear that you could ever need to run your professional business. So now is a great time to load up for summer and they've even created a 5% off discount code for listeners of the show when you use the code BRIGHT at checkout. So head over to havingaparty.com to check them out today. All right, let's get right into it. First of all, um, I forgot to mention in the intro, if you have not entered the float giveaway, make sure you do that. All you have to do is double check that you are on the Bright Balloon mailing list. Many of you already are, so you're already entered. If you're not or you're not sure, there is a link in the show notes wherever you're listening, and you can sign up to get on the mailing list, and one 
Lucky winner will be pulled on June 21st and receive a full registration to float, which is a convention in Chicago in 2024. So last week's episode shared all the details. Make sure to check that out. I'm very, very excited to be able to do that. All right, let's talk about some clutter. Now, for me, the clutter is obviously unsightly, right? But I don't really care about that because I don't have a storefront. I don't have people coming to my shop to pick up. Once upon I once upon a time I did when people were coming to pick up their grab and go garlands, but now that I have outsourced those to a grocery store, people aren't really coming. So it's not about the visual look. I don't really care how things look. I just need it to be really functional, which it's also not because it's cluttered. So the type of clutter I have isn't just like filth. It's not just like empty cans of Coke and like, you know, garbage. There's some of that too, but not mostly. It's it's stuff that I actually use or need or think I need. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, just kind of not having a home. So I have recently invested in a set of marquee numbers. So like hard, light up, three foot numbers. They're giant, right? They take up a ton of space. So I have zero through nine. Then I have these big giant letters that are like, they say baby, they're metal. I ordered them a couple years ago. I have those. I have some leftover stuff from the big balloon build that was like going to get tossed. So I saved that. And then I just have like the regular, you know, my bag that I didn't unload, some balloons that need to be popped, some balloons that need to go out, you know, they're in my shop. And then we go into the storage room and it's a disaster zone because I think what happened in this house before we bought it is my shop, which is attached to the house, I think it used to be the garage before they converted it. So there's a bathroom and everything in there. Like it functions like a real studio, but we don't have a separate garage. So we kind of have to use part of the back storage room for the studio space also as a garage. So like stuff to fix our cars and like camping gear and weird stuff like that ends up back there. So that's a that's a very specific problem. But I know a lot of you also work out of your homes or your basements or your garages and like you have to share the space with other for other purposes. It's not just all balloons. Um, So there's a lot of layers to that there. And I think the biggest problem is a lot of the stuff just doesn't have a home. It doesn't have a place to go. And the stuff that does have a place to go, you can't get to it because there's other stuff in its space. Because when I get home from a job and I'm exhausted, I just dump things and then I go inside. That is not the time where I want to like put things back where they go. So the, the thing that highlighted how disorganized I really was, was actually the stuff that was working. So I had Lily from the Creative Heart Studio on the show. Oh, it had to have been over a year ago now. And she recorded an awesome episode about organization. And at that time, I redid my balloon wall. So I put all my balloons in jars so I can see them. I redid my back stock area where I have my bags of balloons, like waiting to go in the jars. That whole system has been working really, really well. Not just, not just for a day. And then I took an Instagram photo, right? And I posted my beautiful rainbow wall, but it has been functioning perfectly for over a year. So that system is now good. It's like, it's good to go. And because that is working so well, it's pointing out how other areas just aren't working well, because it should be like that. It should be like everything has a space. And when it's missing, you know, and you know where it is and you know where it's going to go when you find the missing thing. So I need the rest of my space to function like my balloons are functioning. So if balloon storage is one of the areas where you're cluttered, go back and listen to the episode with Lily. We will link to that in the show notes so you can find it. Um, But I'm going to skip over my actual balloon organization because that is actually functioning well for me. So the other stuff, it's kind of like that no man's land, right? Like in the middle of my shop, I have this little, I have this little island of floor space that I have to do all my work in and the edges are just creeping up on me because it's just like stuff just keeps building up. So that's the problem area is the actual like function of my shop. So it's not about looking bad. It's about, it's not functioning anymore and a couple things a couple things come out of that. Obviously, a frustration, like it's not pleasant to be out there, like I mentioned um, in, earlier in the episode. It's not fun. It also wastes time looking for things, not being able to find things. Um, 
sometimes I never find the thing and I actually have to like substitute what I was going to use for a job because I can't find the balloon that I thought I had, but I guess I don't, right? Like I just, I can't find things. Um, And then time, like if time is money and you're actually wasting money looking for stuff, that is not okay. And then um, safety, safety becomes a concern. If you have conduit laying in the middle of the floor and you're going to trip and roll your ankle, or if you have helium tanks that you haven't strapped to the wall, or if you have balloons that are loose, like rolling around that you're stepping over, all of those things could actually cause you to fall or, or get hurt. Um, and now I have a, like, I, I don't know what to call her, a, an employee, I guess, right? Like Kate comes and she inflates my balloons for me. And I have another person to think about as well. So I can't put her in a situation where either it's dangerous or frustrating or I don't want to waste her time, especially because I don't pay her hourly. I pay her per item. So if she knows that she can bang out a column in 10 minutes, but because of my mess, it's taking her like 15 or 20 minutes, that's not really okay. That wasn't really the agreement. So I have a lot of things to consider and all of them require me to get clutter free. So that's kind of the why. And I think it's a good thing to to think about the why because it's not always just like, eh, it's messy. I got to clean because that's not enough to keep that's not enough to keep it away. So now I want to think about what's working, what's not working. Obviously, my balloon wall is working, and I think the reason why is because I can see everything. It's visible and it all has a home and it's labeled. It's labeled. So each shelf has a little thumbnail photo of what balloon goes where. So there's a little row for navy balloons. And because it's labeled, I don't swap that for light blue or dark blue or like, eh, close enough. I put the navy balloons where they need to go. And in my back room, in the storage room, that's not the case. Nothing's labeled. It's all just kind of like on shelves. And that's part of the problem. Because like I said, I also kind of share some of that space for garage type of things, for tools and, you know, car maintenance and camping stuff and lawn chairs And none of that's labeled either. So that starts to creep into the shelves that I need for balloons. And my balloon stuff starts to creep over onto the shelves for garage stuff. And all of it just ends up on the floor. That's just what happens. All of it just ends up on the floor because we'll put it away later and then we never do. So I think the labeling is a huge part of what is working and what I need to implement in my back storage area. Another area of what's not working is that there are just some things I don't have a place for. Um, I I saved these little, I don't know, they're probably about four feet tall. They're like little miniature columns that we use for the big balloon build for signage. And they're really nicely made. So I can't bring myself to get rid of them, even though I don't have a purpose for them and I don't have a place for them. They don't store well. They're kind of like knot lamps. Like they have a base and then a skinny little pole. So you have to kind of stand them up. You can't stack them. You can't layer them. You can't put them on shelves. I I don't even really have a solution for them at this point, but they're too nice to get rid of. And I do think I can use them, but there's just, there's not a spot for them. So that is part of what's not working is just not having a home for things. Um, The other thing that's not working is that I am storing everything inside, even though I have like a 20 by 20 fenced in concrete area outside of my shop that I can I could also use for storage. There's a ton of additional outdoor storage, but I haven't figured out how to utilize that because outdoor storage is a problem in the winter because things get snowed on, they freeze together. It's not really accessible. But the more I think about it, maybe there are things that I don't need routine access to. Maybe there are things that I can store in bulk outside that don't always need to be in my shop. So the biggest thing that I have thought of in my mind, kind of if I have to isolate the situation, things don't have a home, things aren't labeled, and everything needs to get off the floor. That's the problem because when in doubt, I stack things on the floor and then the edges of my shop just get smaller and smaller and suddenly I have like a little 10 square foot area to work in and it's terrible. So those are the areas that I am looking to solve. Now, The next section that I want to talk about, which this is the fun part, I think, is the mental impact and the the kind of the the games that we play with ourselves, the lies we tell ourselves, the freedom that comes with decluttering, getting into all of that. So if you don't know Denise Duffield Thomas, she is kind of, I reference her, it feels like every episode. I love her. She talks about small business. She also talks a lot about like manifesting and some of the more like woo-woo type of strategies in terms of accomplishing your goals. 
And her first step for manifesting is decluttering. She says that you have to declutter in order to make room for like the positive stuff that you want to come into your life. So if if you have a shop that's all full of crap and garbage, but deep down you really want to get more, you know, large scale jobs. Again, I don't know what I feel about this, but she says you're never going to attract those large jobs if you know you don't have the room to even build them. Like, I feel like this is true when it comes to my van. I felt like I started attracting larger jobs once I got my van because I knew that I could deliver those jobs. Whereas before I was delivering out of an SUV and it was almost like I was preventing people from ordering a lot of stuff. I was discouraging it. Instead, I was like, no, get two columns instead of two arches because I knew I didn't have to rent a U-Haul to deliver that. Versus now, I'm like, no, get 10 arches. It'll fit. I'll figure it out. So I think the same is true with, with the shop. You don't want to build these massive jobs if you know you don't have the room to do it. I'm less interested in doing 20 columns if I know I have to rearrange piles of crap just to make those columns. So that is the fun thing. I like to think about when I'm getting rid of things, it's like I'm making room for new, good, positive things to come into my life. Um, Now, whether or not you believe in that, I do think that the functionality is really important. Um, and another another kind of mental obstacle to get over is getting rid of things that you're not using or getting rid of things that you could potentially use, but you're not. Like that's that's a battle, I think, especially for us. Like if we look at a very specific category like foil balloons, we know they're never going to go bad, right? There's no reason to get rid of them, but Storage is constantly a problem for foil balloons. They're just a pain in the butt. So we just save everything. And I think that adds to the clutter and the stress. Having a million different foil balloons, even though you know you're never going to use those Pokemon balloons, like we can't get rid of them because it feels like a, a waste, even though you are still having to allocate a tiny little bit of real estate to that product. So this idea of getting rid of things, I think, can be hard. And yeah, you don't just want to throw out a perfectly good balloon, but maybe you have a friend who could take them. Or for me, I try to be like extra generous when I do have an order with foil balloons because I know it's almost like an opportunity to get rid of them without throwing them away. Um, So I'm trying to think of other areas in my life. I mentioned these baby letters. They're like four foot tall metal letters that spell out baby. And they look really cool. They're really well made. But I think I've used them like three times. And I am going to put a deadline on my calendar. On September 1st, if I haven't rented those things five times, I'm going to get rid of them. Because they take up so much space that it's just not its just not worth the real estate or the clutter. They just they get in the way. They take up a good five square feet of my storage area, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. And that's if they're stacked on top of each other. So I keep thinking, oh, but they're so good and they're so cute and like I could use these. But at the end of the day, if I'm not selling them and nobody's renting them, then why am I keeping them? You know, they don't cost me anything. It's not like there's rental associated to them when I have them. So that's why I've clung to them for so long. But now it's been like three years and I've rented them twice. So that is not worth keeping something. Like imagine if you had a sofa in your house that you sat on twice in two years. You absolutely wouldn't keep it. But for some reason with balloon stuff, it it feels harder to part with perfectly good functional stuff. And because they're not really balloon related, I think I could probably sell them on Facebook to someone having a, a shower and, you know, get a little bit of cash at least. So that is some of the mental struggle. And I know people struggle with this much more than I do. I love getting rid of things. Like I love purging. I love decluttering, like even my wardrobe. Like I love it. I'm pretty aggressive. So I'm sure there are people that really, really struggle with getting rid of things. Um, Even latex balloons. It, It feels bad to get rid of balloons, but I have some balloons that are probably two years old, three years old, and they might not even be good anymore. Like some of these I'm looking at, they look a little like weird. They look kind of, I don't know, waxy. I open up the bag. It smells like gasoline. Like Maybe I should just get rid of those now instead of putting myself in a position in the future to try using those and then finding out that they're bad and then I'm in a bad situation inventory-wise. So getting rid of stuff can be hard mentally. It can be a struggle. But I like to think of those two things, that I am manifesting better new opportunities coming in and that I am freeing up space for 
items that I'm not that I'm not going to sell anymore that I do that I you know shifting gears what am I trying to say shifting gears and keeping the things that I use most frequently in in stock and in my rotation and getting rid of those things that I use once in a lifetime and actually this was in another book from our book club and I oh I can't think I think it was Donald Miller I'm not sure but one of his points, which I love, is that when you get rid of things that you're not using, you're actually shutting down that revenue stream. You're actually preventing yourself from selling that item in a good way, and then you're eliminating the cost associated with that item. So for me, the example was party polls. I used to sell party polls all the time. And then one day I decided, I'm not going to sell them anymore. Like I don't want to sell a $75 delivery thing. Like I just, I don't want to do it. And in eliminating that item, I actually freed myself of the materials that belong to that item. I no longer needed to keep three quarter inch white PVC in stock in five foot lengths. Like all of those little five foot pieces, I was able to, you know, send out and not get back. And then when I, they were gone, they were gone. I also used little stumpy pieces of EMT and rebar to like pound into the ground. I no longer need those. So I got to kind of eliminate those one by one and and kind of free myself from that clutter. So there are some things that you can get rid of. Some of the things I'm thinking of, I have ribbon in every single color of the rainbow for helium balloons and I only use white. Every single time I use white. I don't know why that is, but I think I'm going to start kind of trying to liquidate that colored balloon and then not get any more of it and just have all white. I am a bit of a like a minimalist. I love streamlining. I love having a limited selection of things. I think that really helps run a profitable business. So I'm seeing this declutter challenge as a way to almost boost my profits, right? Like niche down and get rid of things that I'm just not going to sell anymore. Um, Another area where I made, I finally like pulled the plug. I have these centerpieces that are awesome, but I will post a picture on Instagram of my storage room of how much room they were taking up. They were like geometric square centerpieces that, you know, you'd put like florals on the top, but I use them for balloons and they're really beautiful. But I don't sell centerpieces, but I mean, I don't know, three times a year. It's really, really rare. So the fact that these centerpiece frames were taking up like two entire shelves was crazy. And instead I just took them apart and I put them all in one box and they're a pain to take apart and put together. But is that something I can do three times a year? Yes. And that is a better use of my space than having them take up half of the storage that I have available. So I was good about, I was glad I was able to condense those. So there might be things in your area that are mentally like just a struggle. Um, Things that you wish had sold that didn't and you just feel kind of like bad about or business cards that aren't the most updated, but you spent money on them. So you feel guilty getting rid of them. I am giving you the permission to get rid of them. Like there. I think that is freeing. There are things that we cling to that we just feel guilty about getting rid of. And that is not based in reality. That is mental. Like it's this sunken cost fallacy. Like, but I spent money on it, so I can't get rid of it. Nope, that's not true. You spent money on it and you can absolutely get rid of it. It doesn't mean that it was a waste of money. Maybe you got your money out of it and now you're not interested in using that anymore. Um, And if you're donating some things, probably not super balloon related things, but if we think of my baby letters, If I try to sell those on Facebook and they don't sell, I think the knee-jerk reaction is to just keep them. Like, okay, well, I'll just hang on to them. But also remember that if you give something to Goodwill, you might like make someone else's day. There might be someone who's having a shower and those are perfect and they buy them and it like they're thrilled to have the thing that I literally don't have a purpose for. And it's just like taking up room and no one is renting. So you can kind of free yourself of some of that guilt that comes along with getting rid of stuff. And try not to throw things out. That's what, like, you know, garbage is one thing. But you can always usually find a home for things, whether it's another balloon person, whether it's a friend, whether it's, you know, goodwill. I just try not to throw out stuff just to get rid of it. Um, that that was kind of a belief I inherited from Gary Ledbetter. He's really good about slowly getting rid of things and not just throwing everything into the trash because certain things are are perfectly functional. They're just not for you. They're just not something that you are going to use. Um, so I did that once with like a bunch of grid wall panels. Like I just wasn't ever going to use them, but they took up a lot of space. So I was able to give them to someone else. Um, I have a couple of arches. I'm going to reach out. Um, Lori, my friend Lori, I'm coming for you. Um, she's close enough that she could take some of this framework that is perfectly good, but I just don't 
use. Because again, I'm trying to standardize. That's part of what isn't functioning for me. I have three circle arches and I only use one of them. So why am I keeping the other two? Because in my head, it's like, oh, because in case I double book and I, I need a second backup frame. Well, I don't want a crappy backup frame. I don't want a backup frame that's way too small. I don't want a backup frame that's way too large. I need two of the same things that I love, right? Like I need to reinvest and have two frames that are the same, that are interchangeable, that can work in any situation. So I'm really trying to get a bit more consistent in what I have. Um, the other thing is bases. Bases will kill you, right? Like you you have all the bases. You have metal bases, wooden bases, concrete bases, broken bases, bases that need to be fixed, bases that don't really work, but you're keeping anyway. Parts of bases, little bolts, two bases. <laughs> like unless you have all steel one size base plate, you're probably like me and you have like a collection of odds and ends. So I'm really going through and I'm actually reassessing how I do my bases and trying to figure out what works in every situation. I have an indoor base, which is wooden, which I really like uh, because you can load up with a lot of sandbags and make as heavy as you need to. And then I have concrete bases, which I also like, but those are annoying because you have to move them in two sections. And then I have knot lamps, which I detest because they fall apart. But when in doubt, you can run to the store and get them. Um, So I have a lot of different bases and I'm I'm really pushing myself this summer to figure out what is my go-to base and column formula. You think I'd have that set after seven years, but after seven years, you you basically figure out a lot of different ways to do the same thing. And I think that is what builds the clutter. So I'm trying to figure out what is my preferred way of building a column. And then I'm going to get to a point where that's the only way I'm doing it. What is my preferred way to do an arch? And that is going to be the only way that I do it. So that is that is where I'm going to do kind of like a slow declutter because I don't just want to get rid of perfectly functional stuff. But knowing that I'm moving in that direction, it might make my stuff a little bit more disposable. I might not go back to get columns if they're on the frame that I'm that I'm out that I'm getting rid of, right? Like that I'm going to phase out. So, man, I'm getting rambly. But all of this to say decluttering isn't just throwing a bunch of stuff out because if that's the case it's going to come back I'm really trying to declutter in like like systematically like I'm trying to figure out the systems that work for me so that the clutter can't come back because I'm no longer buying those things all right whoo let's take a break and then I want to talk about two more categories that I think are ongoing and this is mental and digital declutter. Talk about what those are and how you can get rid of some of that clutter as well. All right, I want to take a second to thank one of our sponsors, Balloon Suite, for not only supporting the show, but for supporting our industry so specifically. If you are in need of a balloon website, you should go to someone who builds balloon websites. And that is exactly what Balloon Suite does, including thebrightballoon.com. So if you want to check out what their work looks like, you can head over to my website and see for yourself. So if you are in need of some help on your website or any of your digital needs, Balloon Suite is my recommendation and you can check them out in the show notes wherever you are listening. All right, welcome back. Let's wrap things up by talking about mental and digital clutter, which is such an interesting concept to me because it's physically non-existent, right? It only exists in your brain or on the internet, but it can consume so much of what stresses us out. I mean, just open your inbox if you want if you want to know what it feels like to look at mental clutter um, and digital clutter. So this is this idea that like things don't have to be tangible. They don't have to be real in front of you. They don't have to be things that you can throw in the garbage. There is digital clutter. There is mental declutter. There can be, um, you know, there's clutter everywhere and we're just surrounded by it. So I am just going to rapid fire go through some of the areas that I'm cleaning out digitally and um, what that's doing for me mentally. So the first thing is email. Um, I am pretty good at email, but still it creeps up on me. So one of the things that I have implemented recently is a whiteboard. And that is so old school, but I just hung a whiteboard at my desk. And instead of going through my inbox and marking those important emails as like unread because I know I have to get back to them or like sending myself an email to follow up with so-and-so, like 
that just gets to be a mess. I now just have a whiteboard and I just have a list of the clients that are like dragging their feet or you know, my big pumpkins, so to speak, the ones that I really want to go after, people I need to follow up with, people where I've kind of, I'm, I'm not sure where they went, right? I just have written them on my whiteboard and then I feel free to like delete that email thread. Like I'll follow up with them when I need to follow up with them. I don't need to just keep marking the same email on red. That's not a system. The other thing that I've done in my email is created some folders, like very, very simple folders because I don't, I don't spend a ton of time in email. I'll talk about why in a second. But the emails that I do have are things that just like don't have a home. So I've just made a folder that says like save or like login details, like things that I don't want to lose, like maybe a class that I registered for that I just, you know, long term, I'm not going to need this info, but so I'm not going to like upload it into my drive and make it super secure, whatever. It's just an email that I'm going to need to reference in like a few months. A perfect example of this is like the class that I'm teaching. Um, Actually, like right now, as we speak, I'm probably on my way to Texas, but a lot of emails went back and forth about this class and eventually I'll, I'll be able to just delete all of them. But right now there's just like little bits and pieces in there that I need to know, like my flight information, the contact person when I get there, the directions to the venue. Like I need that information, but it's not necessarily like it doesn't need to stay in my inbox, right? So I just made a folder and I moved everything into that folder about the class that I'm teaching. So at least it gets it out of my inbox and I'm not having to see it every time I log in, but it's not lost. So folders in your inbox is a really easy way that you can just start, you know, getting rid of some of that, that mental digital clutter. Now, the other reason why I said I'm not I'm not so concerned with my email is because I live in 17 Hats. So they are the presenting sponsor of this podcast. I love 17 Hats. Um, do not fast forward. This isn't going to be just like a big, long commercial. I'm going to talk about why, why it functions for me and how it has helped streamline my digital clutter. So the biggest thing is the email. I have implemented 17 Hats on my website. So the the contact form, when people fill out the contact form on my website. That is actually an embedded form from 17 Hats. And when they fill it out, they automatically get like a little folder created for them. So when I log in, I can see that customer's folder and everything from there on lives in that folder. So it does the organizing for me, basically. And that's why I can delete emails from customers because they all live in 17 hats. So I can see what their inquiry was, what they originally wanted, when their date is. Then I can see when I sent them the invoice. I can see that they've paid. That all lives in their little folder. So I cannot tell you enough how valuable that is compared to trying to run all of that through email and Venmo and Square and like it it's all over the place versus having one designated CRM is definitely the biggest way that I have gotten my digital clutter under control. And also just like my stress. I used to have to like search through my deleted folder and then my inbox and then my sent. And I was like, where where is this person's address? I have to deliver tomorrow and I don't even know where I'm going. Like that used to happen and now it never happens. So that is all credit to 17 hats. So actually implementing a tool to help you with the digital clutter, that is, that's my number one recommendation. Another area where I see a lot of digital clutter is my desktop. I am the queen of just like saving it to my desktop and then eventually I'll clean it out, but then I never do. So I have like 30 folders on my desktop and it's nice to take time to go through and just delete those every few weeks and just give yourself a nice clean desktop on your computer. Um, Another area where I did some decluttering was Facebook. I went and I just left a bunch of groups that I used to be in, I used to be involved in, or a lot of times people can just add you to a group without you even knowing. I was in a lot of groups of people selling like multi-level marketing things, like nail decals, like so-and-so was having a digital something party, all these groups I was in. And it's no wonder why Facebook is a mess to me because I open it up and I see all this stuff I just don't care about. So decluttering um, even your friends, the people you follow. I'm friends with a lot of people I don't even know who they are. So it makes Facebook very unenjoyable because I I don't even know what I'm looking at. Um, Same thing with Instagram. It's okay to unfollow people that you used to be interested in and now you're not. Um, Just going through and, and I think this one's easier to do gradually. Just like as you're scrolling, if you see stuff that you're just not interested in, take a second to just click the unsubscribe and and kind of 
eliminate that from your feed. So that essentially, instead of thinking of it as like getting rid of people, think of it as like curating your feed to be the way you want it. Um, that makes me feel less mean. <laughs> I mean, no one no one notices when you unfollow them, honestly. Um, there's not like you don't get a notification that someone unfollowed you. It's not a big deal. Um, so I just think of it as like I'm not saying no to other people. I'm saying yes to myself, like exactly what I want to see when I open up Instagram and start scrolling because that's what it should be. Um, another area where you can make a ton of progress really fast when you do digital decluttering is um, Dropbox. Like if you store things on either Dropbox or in Google, go in there. There's some stuff like I still had stuff from my job that I quit three months ago and it felt very freeing and very nice to be like, oh yeah, I don't ever need this ever again. I'm just going to delete it. Um, Another area is your phone. How many apps do you have on your phone that are just on there serving no purpose? So go through your phone and declutter any apps that you just never use. That's another really good way to give yourself some visual freedoms, a little bit of extra extra space. And then finally, um, full circle, back to email. Junk email is so annoying. And Gmail has made it really easy that now in those emails, you can actually see that it's like, this is part of a email list. Would you like to unscribe, unsubscribe? They actually give you that option to click the unsubscribe right within the email. But another hack is an app called Unroll Me. Um, I think it's unroll.me. And it, you, you give it access to your email, which is a little bit scary. But I've done it. Nothing bad happened. You give it access to your email to go through. And it goes through every email you've ever gotten. And it allows you to unsubscribe in on the app. So you just like boom, 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 boom. You can go through and unsubscribe to everything. And then the things you don't want to unsubscribe to, you can add them to your daily roll up. So let's say like I don't want to unsubscribe to Kohl's because I want the coupon, right? And every once in a while, I'll need that. But I also don't want them sending me three emails a day that I have to delete. I can add them to my roll up. And it's basically like a newsletter just for you that you open one email and it shows all of the emails that came in that were promotional that day. Um, So that's another option. I just like it mostly because of the unsubscribe feature. It's a really, really fast way to do that. Um, And I think it goes without saying the mental impact that this has. Like I get excited just even saying this stuff because it's – It's not real, but it is, right? Like digital clutter, it's not physical, but it weighs on us. When we are just like inundated by junk email and a messy home screen and, um, you know, you have to scroll three times to find an app on your phone and you can't find the email, like that, that does add up to a very real experience. So even though it's all digital, it's not tangible, it, it impacts me. It impacts my life. I'm sure it impacts yours. So you can go through and like in an hour, you can free up a lot of that mental clutter and digital clutter that's that's taking your time and energy. And Denise Duffield Thomas would say that like clearing out all of that digital clutter is making making room for new good stuff to come in. Clearing out your inbox is like making room. So when you get that big sale, you see it, you're ready to act and you can, you know, get more money. Um, I like her. I like her mental things about uh, declutter, even though they may or may not be true. I think it's fun to tell myself like I'm getting rid of this. So I have room for something new and something like a wardrobe. I think that that's a good rule to live by like one thing out, one thing in. Um, I know clutter in your wardrobe can be a daily uh, burden. Like when you wake up and you're like, I have nothing to wear, but my closet is overflowing, even though half the stuff doesn't fit me. And it makes me feel bad about myself. Like doing a big wardrobe declutter can feel really good and freeing and also anytime you buy something new it's a good idea to get some get rid of something old so that you just keep you just keep a nice little tidy wardrobe that is one area where I am um, a stickler about I I like keeping a very um, like tidy capsule wardrobe because I just I don't I don't want to waste time trying to find something to wear in the morning so that is how I want my balloon shop to function that is why how I want my inbox and my digital clutter to function um there's so much. There's so much that I need to declutter. And I think it's the spring. I have that spring cleaning vibe. I am just excited to keep on keeping on. I have made a ton of progress in my shop. I'm really, really motivated there. Some of the things are not easy fixes. Like we need to go through and actually sort all of the tools because we have duplicates and triplets of some things. And that's not something I want to rush. So it is going to be 
a long process, even though that's the hardest part, I think, is lose, losing the momentum. Like it's easy to do one big daily purge, but when it takes a month and you actually have to like see the project through, that's where I struggle. So maybe I'm even recording this a little bit for accountability. So I will post those photos on Instagram so you can see what I'm starting with and then I will post updates along the way. And I hope this motivates you to get rid of some of the stuff you've been hanging on to for no real reason or make some of those hard choices about items you're just no longer going to offer and allowing yourself to get rid of the coordinating materials. Um, Maybe you're just going to do a purge of the photos on your desktop, right? Like you can do whatever feels good to you, but I hope this was motivating and inspiring. And I will be back next week with another episode. Take care. Thanks for listening. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light. If you are interested in bonus episodes, check out our Patreon group where I release an additional episode every single week and you unlock more than 50 archived episodes as soon as you join. Check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening.